The state of the game live stream today showed off a couple of things that are coming in the 1.4 patch. Most notably, how they're dealing with the higher time to kill. In the next patch, guns and weapons will be more difficult to control, but NPCs will also have a lot less health in return. They also mentioned that bosses will come back to the PvE world and a bunch of other stuff. However, what probably stole the show for a lot of those watching is the world tier selection screen where everybody is going to be able to scale all content to exactly the level that they want to play it at. This is a very big change from how the game currently works after you reach level 30, where everybody kind of needs to do incursions to get the best gear in the game. So today I wanted to take the time to take a more in-depth look at these world tiers and explain to you how it all works together. Let's go! To start off this video, I think it is important to note down a change towards gear score that is also making its way into the 1.4 patch. As the game is right now, you have the best gear set items, which are gear score 268, and the best high end items, which are gear score 229. This gives everybody the indication that gear set items are always better to have than high end items uh, because they have a higher gear score. But because Massive wants the high end items to remain strong and viable build options throughout the whole game, they are going to be changing this up a little bit. After the 1.4 patch, all the gear set items will be set back to gear score 229 to match the high end items that are already in the game. In terms of stat rolls, the high end items are actually going to roll with a slightly higher main stat than the gear set items to compensate for the power of the 2, 3 and 4 piece bonuses. This means that gear set items will remain relatively unaffected, uh, but you can expect your reckless or your vigorous chest pieces to receive a small buff. Why is this important to note down? Well, that is because when I'm going to talk about the world tier system, I'm going to talk about gear score 182, 204 and 229 items a lot. So remember that when I'm talking about those, I'm talking about the high end items, but I'm also talking about the gear set items at the same time. Those two things are going to be equal in the 1.4 patch. With it in mind, let's talk about the world tier system. When you reach level 30 in the game, you're going to be able to open your map and select in which tier you want to play in. You have tier 1, where all the enemies in every single activity are going to be level 30. You have tier 2, where all the enemies are going to be level 31. Then tier 3, where all the enemies are level 32. And last up, tier 4, where, well, you probably already guessed it, all the enemies are going to be level 33. With those higher leveled enemies also comes better loot, and the way that it works is that loot is going to be dependent on your world tier. Tier 1 will drop only 163 gear score items, tier 2 will drop only 182, tier 3 will drop 204 items, and tier 4 will drop 229 items. There are a few exceptions to this rule, for example you can of course still get blue or purple items in any tier which will obviously have a lower gear score than for example 204 or 229. But the developers have also implemented a very small chance for loot to drop at a higher gear score than what you should be getting in your current world tier. So when you're playing for example in world tier 1, you might still end up with a 182 item if you're lucky enough to get one. But aside from those exceptions, this new loot system means that when you're playing in World Tier 4, the highest one out there, you will never, never see a 204 item or below anymore. And every high end or every gear set item that you will get is a gear score 229 100% of the time. Taking these two things in mind, you can probably see how this opens up a whole lot of replayability of their content at the end game. No longer do players have to just grind incursions or the dark zone to get the best loot. They can play any mission or, as I said, even roam the open world and kill the PvE bosses. Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot set different difficulties for activities anymore, however. While in your own world here, you can still walk up to missions or incursions and set the difficulty to normal, hard, challenge or heroic mode. This will not increase the NPC level, however. Remember, in World Tier 4, every enemy that you see will be level 33 and no higher. Level 34 and level 35 NPCs are completely removed from the game. Instead of scaling the NPC level, the different difficulties will increase what type of enemies you're going to be playing against. Uh, for example, on normal modes, you can expect enemies with a red health bar and no armor. You know, the normal enemies that you face when you level up from level 1 to level 30. On hard mode, you will face those veteran enemies with a purple health bar and 4 blocks of armor. On challenge mode, you will face those elites with the yellow health bars. 
And on heroic mode, I actually don't know what they're gonna do with heroic mode. I, I think it's just that the enemies are gonna be more aggressive or that you're gonna have more of them. I believe it was one of those two, but I'm not 100% sure. Because the loot in the game will always be scaled towards the, what world tier you find yourself in, playing on a higher difficulty will not give you higher gear score items. Instead, the game is going to reward you with a lot more items of that same gear score. No exact numbers are set in stone yet, as I'm sure the developers are busy balancing this out until the very last moment that the patch drops, but as a general ID or a general rule of thumb, you can expect that normal mode activities will give you one item, again the gear score depends on what world tier you play in, hard mode gives you two items, challenge mode gives you four items, and heroic mode gives you six items. That means that, for example, completing a mission on Heart in World Tier 3 will give you two 204 items. And completing a heroic incursion in World Tier 4 will give you six 229 items. And remember that when I say 204 or 229, I'm talking about high ends, but I'm also talking about gear set items. So yes, there is a chance that after completing Falcon Lost, you get six gear set items. Combine that with the fact that Falcon Loss is getting checkpoints and suddenly the endgame isn't looking that bad anymore, right? The Dark Zone is also affected by these world tiers, uh, but they work a little bit different. Instead of you choosing in which world tier you will be playing, the game chooses for you, the same way that the game chooses your bracket right now. This is obviously to prevent players from going to a lower tier and then shitting on newer players, but it is also to guarantee that players are always playing for the best gear that they can have. As I said, enemies do not scale with levels anymore and the same applies to the Dark Zone. From DZ01 to DZ06, the level of the NPC will be the same across the board. Difficulty will be determined, again, by what types of enemies you're facing. In the side of the Dark Zone you will mostly see those NPCs with a red health bar, and then going all the way north they will slowly turn into veteran and elite NPCs that are going to be more difficult to take down. I didn't mention this earlier in the video, but another change that is also coming with the 1.4 patch is that every enemy in the game now also has a chance to drop loot, not just the bosses. And of course, all the other NPCs were able to do that before, they're able to drop loot right now, but I'm not talking about blue pieces or purple ones, I'm talking about high-end and gear set items. Of course, the bosses give you a 229 gear score item 100% of the time, again, if you're playing in World Tier 4. But it's also possible for elites, veterans, or even the normal NPCs with the red health bar to drop the best stuff in the game. Obviously though, the elite enemies will have a much higher chance of doing so than the normal NPCs, and that is how playing in the north area of the Dark Zone is going to reward the player with more loot. You will see a lot more elites there, and thus, over a longer period of playtime, you will see a lot more loot drops fall from those NPCs that aren't a boss. Overall, I think this world tier system is great, and it does pretty much everything that we've been asking for. More and better loot, a way for solo players to gear up, and NPCs that do not just one-shot you at any moment. I've already seen some people say that this will make the game a bit too easy, but the intention here is to let players that are at the end game and that are already min-maxed out on all their stats feel powerful again, just like when the game came out. You shouldn't have to hide from two shotgunners if you got 700k toughness or 400k DPS. If you spent all that time playing the game and getting the last few percentages of your stats on your gear and pretty much perfect your build, you should be able to plow through the content and destroy any NPC in your way. And with the new scaling that the game brings, it allows you to do just that instead of always being afraid of those one-shot shotgunners. But yeah, that's the world tier system for you, that was all for today. Trust me when I say that there's a lot more to come, unfortunately, because I'm under an NDA, I cannot share more with you right now. But be patient, it's only a matter of time. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.